inside a computer program before data is processed, it needs to be stored in the computer's memory. One of the ways that we can do this is by using variables. You can think of a variable as a bucket or a container for holding data. This bucket has a name, a data type so that we know what type of data it holds and the data itself. The data that this bucket holds is known as a value. So a variable holds a value. The reason why we use variables is because we can use the data that they hold by simply using the name of the bucket. Now, every programming language offers ways to create and use these variables. For example, in JavaScript, this statement creates a variable named pi that holds the value 3.1415. Let's deconstruct this statement to understand what we're doing here. Once again, you do not have to remember how this works in JavaScript for now. I just want you to understand how variables work through a practical example. Now the word let is a reserved keyword, part of JavaScript's grammar. This creates a variable. Next, we have the name of the variable as pi. This is something that is up to us to decide, but there are some rules and best practices which we'll discuss in a bit. Next up, we have the equal to sign. This is known as an assignment operator, which basically takes the value on the right hand side of the sign and puts it in the variable on the left hand side of the sign. And finally, we have the actual piece of data, the value which is stored in our little bucket, our variable named pi. Therefore, a place in the computer's memory is reserved with the name pi and the value 3.1415 is placed inside. Now, this value can be used anywhere in a program by using the variable's name pi. It can also be manipulated, updated and removed all by using the name. Let's see how. I'll define one more variable named radius and we'll set its value to 20. Now to compute the area of this circle with the radius 20, I can use the formula as pi r square. To express this, I can define a variable called area and use the values of pi and radius like so. And this will compute the area and store the result in the variable area, which I can then show to the user. Now, before I go further, let me quickly draw your attention to these elements. These are known as operators. Here we have two operators in use, a multiplication operator, which just multiplies two numbers, while the other one is the exponentiation operator. When this code runs, the three storage locations are created in memory. One holds the value of pi. The other named radius holds the number 20. And in the third one named area, the value of pi and radius are fetched and computed down as per the equation. This way, to compute area of a circle with the radius 25, all we need to do is change the value of radius from 20 to 25 with no other changes to code. This way, named variables allow us to access discrete values across the program easily. Now, you can also use variables to store strings, boolean, and other types of data. So if you think about it, the variable itself has a data type associated with it. Languages like Java require you to specify the type of data that you're going to store in a variable. This is like earmarking one basket for fruits while the other one strictly for vegetables. In such cases, if you attempt to store something else, you'll get an error. Such a language is known as a statically typed language where the compiler checks to see if you're storing the right kind of data in variables during the compilation phase. Languages like Java, Rust, C++, Haskell, C Sharp, and Swift are all examples of statically typed languages. JavaScript, on the other hand, is a prime example of a dynamically typed language where the language detects the data type on its own from the kind of data stored in a variable. And this happens when the program is executed, that is during runtime. Besides JavaScript, Python, PHP, Ruby, and Groovy are examples of dynamically typed languages. All right, with that out of the way, let's quickly talk about some of the things to keep in mind when defining the name of a variable in your programs. Variable names must never begin with a number. So variable names like the ones shown here are typically considered invalid. Always begin with a character and not a number. Now, variable names should be meaningful. 
Remember, you may not be the only one working through your code and in a team, it helps to follow a standard and a meaningful convention that makes sense to everyone. Next up, as a recommended practice, begin variable names with a lowercase character. And while there are several strategies to set the case, the most popular and the one that I would recommend is camel case. So if your variable is a single word, then it would be all lowercase. On the other hand, if your variable name is made up of two or more words, then it should be written like this, where the first word begins with a lowercase character, while the rest of the words must begin with uppercase characters. And there should not be any space between these words. There are other ways to name variables. For example, you can use underscores to separate the words. However, camel case names are easier to read. There are many ways to learn to program, and a good programming practice is to select the right variable names. It may take an extra second of thought, but could make a big difference in the ease of use of your programs. Here's a great way to learn about more best programming practices. With our outcome-based immersive learning approach, we are fundamentally disrupting the way new age technologies are learned. You'll get to learn, practice, assess, gain insights on your learning, and personalize your learning journey on our easy to navigate AI powered skill building platform, Prism. Stay tuned for more such videos and explore more about how you can equip yourself with immediately demonstrable in demand skills that will help you get job ready. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos.